Hi guys, right now I will show you how we did the installation of the OEM genuine Toyota hitch. So this is how it looks. Because the hitch didn't come with a vehicle, you have to cut out a hole in the bumper. For that, Toyota supplies uh, the template which you can use. As you can see, we only cut out the hole for the actual hitch at this point. But there is also an opening which could be cut uh, for the electrical connector. We have not installed the wiring yet, but when we do, we'll probably have to cut out another section right here. So the clearance is following. To the hitch itself, there is around 34 centimeters or 13 and a quarter inches. To the lowest point of the hitch assembly, 29 and a half centimeters or I believe it's 11 and a half inches. The lowest point of the hitch does not affect uh, the departure angle at all. This is how it looks from the side. Previously we have installed a different hitch on this vehicle, aftermarket one. And the reason why we decided to switch to the original is uh, because it has eight bolts that mount uh, the hitch assembly to the body or the frame of the vehicle which in turn divides uh, the load or the weight that you carry more evenly while the aftermarket hitch had only four bolts that uh, were holding the assembly in place another reason why we decided to use the original Toyota hitch is because the previous one was about uh, five centimeters lower than this one Hi guys, today I'll show you how we did the installation of OEM Toyota hitch wiring kit. The wire will start its pass from the battery right here, so the first connection will be done to this terminal. Then you can see that the wire goes below this bracket, goes through here, and at some point it will enter the cabin through the grommet which has a nipple which you have to cut but again all that will be shown in the video so our power cable will exit somewhere in this area through the firewall and uh, I must say that uh, this part of the installation is the easiest because after this there will be a number of things that will have to be disassembled. First of all, we'll start with removing this plastic trim. After that, we'll have to remove uh, the trim from this pillar. The wire will keep going up to this point. Then this piece has to be removed. And at this stage, and we have to remove rear seats in order to have access to these panels so we could remove them. So the wire will proceed in this area and it will reach the bumper at this point. The original Toyota uh, wiring harness comes with four flat connector, but we installed this seven blade one instead. It's an adapter, which you don't necessarily have to do, but in our case we did it this way. Again, all this will be shown in the video. So, as you see, I managed to drill this hole between this pin and that pin so it makes the whole bumper to be more safe so what I did I cut this two notches to fit this key inside properly okay now it's time to drill the holes
Okay, let's take a look how it looks after installation. So as you see, I managed to avoid removing this clip and that clip. So I put extra screw on the bumper plastic it will hold everything much better. So this is harness from hitch and this is harness from seven blade adapter. I will connect them and I will zip tie all electrical connections. We have installed this Red Arc electric trail brake controller. The main problem, we have no place, no room for this knob. This knob, it's actually the remote uh, head unit that control the controller itself. So the best place that we found the place instead of this plug. So it's perfect place for this installation. We cut off this part. To modify it, this part you have to use the pilot drill bit, 3.5 mils drill bit and 10 mils drill bit. This nut and this bezel. So bezel goes first, and now not. Like that. Both clips not interfering with the uh, old design of this switch. Goes here and there. The best place for installation of this main unit is here. This is more than enough room to install it. And it goes here. Of course, you have to find some brackets to finalize installation. So connection for electric brake controller starts from the battery. Uh, then goes down through the firewall to the cabin and will spread to the left and to the right side. To the left side uh, it will be installation for a light converter and through the right side will be installation for the seven uh, blade and uh, four pin electric uh, connectors at the back of the car. So here we have our connection to the reverse light. You can see the blue wire right there. Then it proceeds and goes to here. At this point we have another connection to the stop light right there. From then on we proceed through these holes under the roof liner. It goes to this point where we have all these wires going first to this place and later it reaches the seven blade adapter and the rest of the wires go inside the cabin where they will uh, later connect it to the controller uh, we have a couple of crossbars that come in the set. We also have uh, aluminum brackets on each side of the crossbar and on top we'll have the plastic cover. Each crossbar is shaped like a wing. This way uh, there won't be much noise and uh, it won't affect gas mileage as much. Also as you can see they're different in size. Uh, the larger, the longer 
uh, crossbar will go to the front of the vehicle and the short one will go to the back. Uh, the plastic cover has been removed uh, very easy. You just have to use uh, this kind of tool or something else and it just pries open. And here you can see uh, this is where we'll be using the, our bolt. Set comes with the bolt, the washer and the driver. The bolt should be securely tightened but still do not apply crazy amount of force not to break the bolt and also a good recommendation is to check uh, about every thousand kilometers just check if the crossbar is secure and don't forget to tighten all uh, these bolts now it's time for the plastic cover insert the locking mechanism once it's fully inserted turn it clockwise and the, the rubber plug Uh, maximum load capacity is 160 pounds, uh, 80 pounds per crossbar. And this is how it looks now. If you guys like this product, I will leave the link in the description. Hi guys, today we're going to show you a new shelf from a catering home. As you can see, it gets installed uh, in the middle of the uh, rear uh, space. And uh, as you can see, it allows us to carry, to split our uh, luggage or whatever you're carrying, your bags, and secure them on, uh, on the top shelf. Uh, we are using this band here, which allows us to secure our luggage, for example. And uh, due to the fact that it has all these openings, as you can see, it's pretty flexible and you can uh, manage a lot of stuff here. So I'll take all this off for now and right now we'll show you how, um, how it works. So first of all, we have these uh, mounting brackets. One on this side and the other one on this side. Uh, both get secured using the double-sided tape. Uh, you may think that it won't uh, hold, but uh, let me show you something. As you can see, it holds very well and uh, it's not going anywhere. We used this uh, adhesion promoter which came in the set and this allows to create much stronger bond between uh, the plastic and uh, the tape. The set comes with a couple of beams, uh, one right here and one uh, right here. This will ensure the uh, structural stability of the shelf. Uh, we use a number of uh, bolts. Uh, there are a few on uh, uh, the top, I believe three on that side and three on this side. And uh, as you can see, we have a, a number of them underneath as well. Again, all of them hold the whole thing in place. And by the way, you can also use uh, these openings in the shelf to hang some stuff underneath as well. I'll show you guys that you can easily fold the seats as well when you have the shelf. Uh, the only thing you have to be aware is that uh, it's fixed, it's pretty much stationary at this point. You cannot quickly remove it. The only way to do it is to unscrew these bolts and then you'll be able to take it the whole piece out if you want to use the cargo cover which gets installed right here well if you want to use both this shelf and cargo cover it's actually not possible because the shelf uh, doesn't allow the cargo cover to be installed in this case so yes if you decide to get this one 
the cargo cover won't be uh, used. Uh, right now I will show you another way how to install the shelf. It actually can go vertically. And this is how it's going to look like in the vertical position. Again, we switched, uh, well, the brackets stay the same, but the uh, shelf was turned like this. And this allows us uh, to have this space uh, partially covered. So if you have a big dog, for example, and if you want to keep it in the back of the vehicle, this will help. Uh, besides that, you can also maybe use some hooks to secure some items here as well. But in our case, uh, we'll probably stick with the horizontal shelf. Uh, we think it uh, works much better this way. Again, we think it's uh, quite a good idea for a shelf. Uh, and if you guys like it, uh, I will leave the link in the description. And as I said, it holds very well in place.